Hello and welcome to Gearheads. My name's Jesse and today we're going to be going over a review of my Matco torque wrench. So this thing's pretty pricey. Uh, it's not probably something the average weekend warrior DIYer is going to want to uh, you know, purchase just because of the price. However, I found myself as a mechanic after a while needing something like this because this torque wrench does so many things. So let me show it to you guys first. I'll go over some of the features and then after I'm done, I'll kind of give you my thoughts on what I do like about it and what I don't. And uh, yeah, so let's give you a closer look at this thing. So here's the box it comes in. Now this is the Matco half inch drive flex head digital torque wrench. So yeah, the box isn't that bouncy open up. It's gonna fall like that. Not a big deal. Now uh, there it's got a little bit of a flex head on it. Um, that's one of the reasons I got this one. They have a very similar one that's just slightly cheaper uh, that does not have the flex head but I've found when I'm doing head bolts um, in certain engine bays this actually makes it a lot easier to access things. Uh, in some cases it's <laughs> almost the only way to do it. Now uh, I actually have the cap off the back. We'll talk about that a little bit later but let me go ahead and screw the cap on. Now oh, there you go. You should be able to see it coming to life there. And the cap for the batteries actually is reverse thread. I don't know why they did that, but uh, you know, lefty tighty righty loosey on this one. Now it's turned on, it's uh, set to 100 foot pounds. So some of the cool things this ratchet has is uh, it's got a bunch of presets on it. So uh, you hit this P and the C button up here and it'll go through the presets. So I kind of, oh, angle mode. So that's one of the other things I want to discuss. Let me set it down because it needs to calibrate itself to go into angle mode and it'll stay there. If you set it down for a second, it will set. If you sit there and hold it, you won't be able to hold it that still and it'll sit there and keep trying to calibrate until it gets a chance to. So, so uh, preset number one, angle mode, 90 degrees. Uh, and then I've got 312 inch pounds. I don't know, uh, I don't know why I probably converted to that from foot pounds or something. But anyways, next 22 foot pounds. 40 foot pounds you get the idea though uh, you know it's got nine presets so that's kind of cool actually it's it's nice to uh, nice to be able to just turn this thing on switch to which setting i'm going to and uh and select it so now it does foot pounds inch pounds and newton meters and angles and that's one of the biggest reasons i found myself needing to buy a torque wrench like this as a professional because modern cars it's very common now to see torque specs in angle they want you to put something in to say uh you know 20 30 foot pounds and then add a certain amount of angle to it after that a lot of head bolts for example like the dodge hemis they have you put it into like i think it's uh this is just off the top of my head but i think it's something like somewhere around 20 foot pounds then around 40 foot pounds and then around 80 foot pounds and then you go 90 degrees on all of them now 90 degrees might not be too hard to do without one of these if you've got a good eye and you make some marks and stuff like that but on a lot of engine bays it's really hard to do that um you know if you got if you're working at a rear at a weird angle or at a weird spot it's really hard to actually track it accurately and that you know that's something you really want to put in accurately is your head bolts so this makes it super easy to to do that and uh, so when you when I turned it on you probably saw it had the lights that came on and uh, so when you set this thing to whatever torque you want whether it's angle or foot pounds inch pounds Newton meters whatever uh, as you tighten it down and you get closer the light will change from green to yellow and then it'll turn red right when you're about to hit your torque spec and then it also vibrates so it doesn't click it's not a click style torque wrench but it vibrates in your hand changes color and beeps at you so i found this to be really nice uh for moving quickly especially you know you don't want to go too quick maybe let's for example i'm putting in head studs on a ford six liter diesel engine first you put the head studs in by hand then you put the head gaskets on, slide the head gaskets down into place, and then get all your nuts just finger tight and started. Once you're there, you've got a whole bunch of nuts to tighten down, and it takes a long time if, you, if you're uh, using a click style torque wrench because you start low, you start at a, a lower torque spec, kind of like I said for the Hemi. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what they are, but you put it in somewhere around 20 foot pounds, 40 foot pounds, and then up to 80, and then you keep you got, get up to a higher number. And I think on those, on those head studs, it gets up to around 200. Uh, foot pounds so the really nice thing is for that first round up until you get to the last one where I will take a little bit more time and make sure I get them all 
you know, close and so they're all even. I can just go real quick and bang out the first ones with this thing because it makes it so easy with the, the vibrating and the noise. I just set it to, for maybe the first round, 20 foot pounds. I just set it on there and I just go, go to the next one, go to the next one, and I don't have to worry about waiting to feel for a click. I can listen and feel for the vibration, which uh, makes a little bit faster to use in situations like that. So let me take this over and uh, I'll just put like a nut or something on the vise and I'll show you guys. We'll set something maybe to like, you know, just 30 or 40 foot pounds and then I'll show you the, uh, the degree option on there as well. So just as a quick example. All right, so I got something jigged up in the vise here. Now let's go ahead and just turn this thing on. Ooh, pretty colors. It says Matco Tools on it. Now let's go ahead and turn this down. Let's go to one of my other presets, actually. So, oh, angle mode. Can I hold it still enough to calibrate? Probably not. If I set one side down, probably just for a second. Yep. All right, set one side down. Okay, so let's just start off with uh, 40 foot-pounds. Let's see how that goes. So, and this is set to peak, so you can set it on a couple different settings. You can go to, let's see, mode. You can do peak or track. So that's kind of cool, actually, with this thing. If you put it on tracking mode, you can watch the screen and tighten something down, and, or you can use it to even test you know, how tight something is uh, while you're removing it. Or, you know, like I said, you could also install things and watch and see how tight it goes. It's not really something I use all the time, but it is kind of cool that it has it. And I have used it a couple times. So, all right, exit. So 40 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and just put this thing on here. Let me show you guys what it does. So, all right, there now you see it's at 19.6. Light is green. Getting up to 30. It's turning yellow, it's getting close, red. And then it just vibrated in my hand and beeped. You heard the beep, and that's at 40.3 foot-pounds. So that's how that mode works. So now let's go back to the angle mode. Now, uh, we'll go to 90. Oop, I went past it. Let me go back around again. Zero, okay. Now let's go down. I'm just gonna put it, let's say, just 35 degrees. Nothing crazy, but uh, show you how it tracks it. Now, this has been really nice for me to use because there has been times where, for some reason, a manufacturer has something they want you to install and they say it's got to be put in at this torque spec and then 37 degrees or something silly like that. And it's like, you know, that's just a pain in the butt to try and measure by hand. This makes that so much faster and easier. But anyways, it'll track my degrees as I go here. So, so it's at zero, one degrees, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. Ooh, I'm going through a light so you can't see. 20 degrees, I'm getting pretty tight now, 23. So this is one of the things about this torque wrench that is really nice. I can stop, go back, get a couple more ratchet clicks on it, and come back again. So we're at 30, there we go, 35 degrees right there. And then it also told me I put it in at 105 foot-pounds, so it beeps that a couple times at you, 105.9 foot-pounds. So I hope this gives you at least a decent idea of, uh, you know, how well how this thing works and uh, and some of its features. You know, it's got more stuff in the menus. There's nothing too exciting going on here to show you. I mean, there's the peak and track mode. Uh, I think this is to clear your settings, show memory, not sure. Oh, okay, I think that goes, oh, okay, so that's showing what I did last. And then, oh, look at that. So I guess there's a little history in here of the last things I've done. Now that could be pretty cool, actually, if you're doing the kind of work where you're doing similar stuff over and over again. But for some reason, if you don't remember it, you guys, I guess you could look here and it would tell you so you can go back and, uh, and check. But anyways, let's go back to mode, beat track, exit. Oop, there we go, oh, angle mode. Let me let it calibrate again. Now, I believe you hit this U button if you want to convert. So there you go, 260 inch pounds, 30 Newton meters, angle mode again. And the cool thing is it converts it for you. So if you set something to, you know, 22 foot pounds and you hit that, it'll tell you exactly what it is in inch pounds, which is really nice, as well as Newton meters. So that's another cool feature. So let's go ahead and power it down. I don't remember if it lights up at you when you shut it off or not. Nah, it just shuts off, but. Anyways, very cool, very handy. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea of you know what that tool can do and how it works. 
uh, like I said, the range is from about 12 and a half foot pounds up to 250. I have found you actually can set it a bit higher than 250 if for some reason you need to, although I bet it's probably not as accurate that high. It's not rated for that. Uh, and it maxes out at some point and won't let you, won't let you go past a certain point. So I, you know, be careful. If you really need something to go higher than 250 foot pounds, it's probably a better idea just to actually buy a torque wrench that will, you know, support that range. For the most part, I really love this tool. Uh, you know, it was expensive and it hurt, you know, initially buying it, but, and I, I, the other thing is I don't use it every day. It's not like every single day I'm torquing everything down and I'm not always doing stuff. Even if I'm torquing smaller stuff, I'm not breaking that thing out. I'm only breaking that out usually on bigger jobs. Most commonly I use it for head bolts or head studs, but I do use it, you know, for other things as well. Just random things that come up here and there. The price on Matco's website is $600, it's like $599.95 or something like that. I think I got it on a promo because I did wait till it came on sale, but even still, it, it didn't save me that much. I think I still paid about $530 to $540 for it. And you know, I really like the tool and I've been really happy with it. But there is one thing I do not like about it that I have had a small issue with. Um, I know you might have noticed when I first pulled it out of the case, I had to put on the cap for the battery. I don't really care that it's reverse thread on that thing. That doesn't matter to me. I don't know why they did it. But every time I use it uh, and then I put it away, I always take the cap back off because I've had a problem for some reason with that thing killing batteries. The thing is, it doesn't lose the memory of your presets or anything like that when you uh, take the cap off. So, so that's cool. At least it still holds the memory in it. But I went through like two or three different sets of batteries in several months with that thing, or not several months, it was probably about three or four months, and I wasn't using it all the time. I just couldn't believe how fast it was going through batteries, and now since I've been doing that, it seems like the batteries are lasting longer. I've had this set in there for about the same amount of time now as I went through two other sets before I put these ones in. At that time, I was just leaving the cap on, putting it away, and uh, and now I don't do that. And it seems to have fixed that problem. So just keep that in mind. This thing likes to eat through batteries, especially if you leave the cap on it. Don't know why. You'd think three AAA batteries would last, or excuse me, not AAA, AA, but you'd think three AA batteries would last a little bit longer than that. But who knows? Either way, those are at least pretty cheap. And if you want to, you could have a, you know, you could have a charger on your toolbox or something like that to keep some rechargeable AAAs around. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you have any more questions about the Torque Wrench uh, or any of my other tools that I have, drop a comment down below. I always like hearing what you guys have to say, hearing what you think, and uh, answering any questions that you might have. So obviously, like I said in the beginning of the video, it is a little bit expensive for the weekend warrior kind of DIY kind of guy, but uh, at some point you're probably going to be working on something where you need to do angles and maybe at least if this isn't the one you'd be looking at, at least now you kind of know it's an option out there and there is other torque wrenches like this out there that are probably a little bit more affordable. So if you guys like the video, please hit the like button and uh, if you didn't like the video, hate Mako, think it's too expensive, go ahead and hit the downvote button, I don't really care. And please, if you guys want to see more stuff like this and you enjoy our videos, hit the subscribe button. We're doing tool reviews. I'm working on uh, you know car projects and stuff as well, doing some how-to videos, talking about some shop and mechanic stuff as well. So we really appreciate having you here. Hope you guys enjoyed it again. And as always, keep wrenching.